Hello, I'm Rod Dreher. I'm a journalist, a writer, and the author of a book called The Benedict Option. I published The Benedict Option in the year 2017, and uh, it quickly became a bestseller in America among Christians and is now available in 11 languages. The book has become quite controversial among a lot of Christians because it assumes that we are living at the end of the Christian era in the West. And I tried to come up in the book with a strategy for how Christians can uh, survive this era of uh, a loss of faith and maybe even persecution and keep ourselves and keep our communities and our families alive and rooted strongly in Christ so that when the, the dark night of disbelief has left us, we will be able to start over. Now, the, I started in the book, The Benedict Option, with the metaphor of a flood. The year before I published the book, uh, I was living in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, my hometown, and uh, a horrible flood came, a once in every 500 years flood. Places that had never seen floodwaters were suddenly deeply underwater. You heard people all over the city saying, we had no idea, we weren't ready, we didn't expect this coming. Well, I think that flood, that real life flood, is a good metaphor for what so many of us in the West are living through today. We are living in a time when all of the things, or so many of the things that we once believed in and thought were permanent, certainly to do with the faith and the practice of the faith, are now in question. Some of them are being lost and being submerged in what one scholar has called liquid modernity. Now, this scholar, uh, a Polish uh, Marxist named Zygmunt Bauman, may not have believed in Jesus, but I think he had a really good insight into what it means to live in the modern era. He said that in modern times, meaning for the last 200 years or so, history and the rate of change have begun to speed up. And they've sped up so quickly now that before new ways of living, new institutions, new practices become hardened, they melt again and change again. He said the condition of living in modern times is liquid, where there's no solid ground to stand on because everything is changing so fast. I think he's right about that. And I think that we Christians have got to be prepared to thrive and not be drowned or dissolved in liquid modernity. Now, Benedict XVI, uh, the great Pope who died not long ago, said in the year 2012 that we in the West today are living through the greatest spiritual and religious crisis since the fall of the Western Roman Empire. That's quite a statement, but I think he's right. He's talking about the catastrophic loss of belief in, in Christ that is spread among the West, certainly in Europe, but it's now really kicking in in the United States as well, even though the U.S. had long been a, a counter to European secularization. Now with the last two generations, so-called millennials and Generation Z, we're catching up quickly to Europe. Um, those who do believe, younger people who believe in Jesus, often believe in a, a version of Christ that has very little to do with the gospel. They believe in what, in what one scholar has called moralistic therapeutic deism. It is a pseudo-Christianity that presents itself as Christian and has conquered and colonized, parasitized many of the churches. The scholar is a professor of sociology at the University of Notre Dame, Christian Smith. Christian Smith said that moralistic therapeutic deism has a few basic characteristics. One, it believes that God exists. Second, it says that all God wants of us is to be nice, and to be happy and satisfied with ourselves. Third, it says that everybody who is good will go to heaven, except Hitler and a few really, really bad people. And finally, it says that you only really need to call on God when you want something, as if he were a sort of cosmic butler. Christian Smith and his research team found that these basic beliefs, which can't be reconciled at all with the gospel, are what constitute Christian belief for so many modern young people today. And if that's true, then this will be the last generation that holds on to any belief in Christ because this is just consumeristic, therapeutic, pseudo-religion. Well, the, what I call the Benedict Option is a recovery of an orthodox, of a dis disciplined uh, communal way of life 
that can stand as a sign of contradiction to the post-Christian era and to the pseudo-gospel of moralistic therapeutic deism. It is not heading for the hills or hiding away from the world like we're, we're in the monastery. We, late Christians, are called to be in the world. Paradoxically, though, if we are going to be in the world as faithful Christians, we have to step back to some degree away from the world to deepen our faith, to deepen our prayer lives, to deepen our study of Scripture, to deepen our commitment to the liturgy, and to strengthen communal bonds. I named the Benedict Option after St. Benedict of Nursia, a 5th century saint who came from a little town of Nursia in central Italy, the mountains of central Italy. The town of Nursia is called today Norcia, and there is a Benedictine monastery right there in that town. I visited the monastery in 2015 and met the American monk who was at the time the abbot of the monastery, Father Cassian Folsom. I told Father Cassian about the Benedict Option idea, about the idea that Christians, whether you're Orthodox, Catholic, Protestant, we all have to be, start living much more intentional lives set apart somewhat from the world so that we can hold on to the faith during this time of trial. He listened to me and said, Rod, what you're saying is true. Any Christian who wants to make it through with his or her family through the trials to come must do some version of the Benedict Option. In our next recording, we'll be talking more about the life of St. Benedict and what he has to say to us Christians living in the 21st century. I'm Rod Dreher.